Greetings, proletariat. George Washington, Martin Luther King, Madeleine Sackler, Janet Street Porter, Haile Selassie, all great Americans in and around the 21st century. But none of them come close to Dr. Elon Musk, BSC, OSC, DRP. Now, listen in for the story of our man and God. Born in 1971, Musk's father, Errol, had already built a philanthropic empire in South Africa and beyond. Behind the facade of a Zambian emerald mine, Errol and his brothers, Elrond and Enron, were in fact operating an extensive underground railroad to rescue children from apartheid South Africa and exploitation everywhere. Think Oscar Schindler, if Schindler had been brave. Nevertheless, the world was in great turmoil. Then, one night, a star appeared high in the sky. That very night, a babe was born, and that wonderful baby was Elon Musk. Elon, named after an anti-Nazi character in Lord of the Rings, the middle child of 17, quickly distinguished himself as a genius in and out of the competitive world of Praetorian academia. By nine, he had mastered French and Flemish, and had curated a book translating Plato into COBOL. At his graduation ceremony from South Africa Elite University, Das Kumpelnik Technikal, at 12, Elon stunned onlookers by declaring the apartheid government illegitimate and kissing the feet of a nearby black man with gusto. That black man, as it turned out, was a 15-year-old Nelson Mandela. Elon became an apostle to Mandela, spreading the word of black people being totally not inferior to the whites. But then, Mandela became seduced by power and Winnie, trading his dignity for quick cash and fame by appearing on I'm a Celebrity Get Me Out of Here, celebrity who wants to be a millionaire, where he was paired with Alan Dershowitz, and briefly, Sons of Anarchy. Nelson, binging on drugs, mostly crack, was arrested and the movement was destroyed. Elon and the lesser apostles were forced into hiding in plain sight. Despite leading numerous sub-Saharan nations to freedom through brutal guerrilla warfare, Elon nevertheless kept his mind sharp. From his foxhole in the Congo Basin, he invented PayPal, a revolutionary online money transfer system that could circumvent control of imperialist banks for fun while fighting the good fight in Angola. PayPal was so successful that it made Elon a billionaire. Being from humble beginnings, and with a father that was basically a modern-day knight ascetic, Elon found great shame in his new wealth, even though he legitimately earned all of it himself. He set up dozens of non-profit organizations with the sole aim of helping normal people, even though Elon was far superior to all of them. Elon gave away every penny of his fortune, turning his back on the excesses available to him. Instead of indulging in cocaine and prostitutes in various places watched by intelligence agencies world over, he spent his younger years visiting poorer countries, occasionally rescuing orphans from industrial slavery, and always treating the poor as equals, even when it was clear to them and everyone else that they were not. He simultaneously earned PhDs in rocket engineering, memetic psychology, and a double in electricity. In the same year, Elon became the first man to pull an unburdened train engine across the Appalachians without the use of a track, Elon founded Tesla, named after Tesla coils in Command & Conquer Red Alert, a game at least as mentally taxing as chess. While the electric car had been invented, it was never invented like this. Elon changed the world with his reliable, affordable, aesthetically pleasing, all-electric vehicles. He became a billionaire again, from scratch. And, as you know, the acquisition of material wealth is the biological imperative. The boss, lover sir, grand wizard, el maestro loco, spasticus or tisticus, 
all nicknames given to Musk by his workers and by troops in the field. For even though he was a well-known and beloved inventor billionaire, he spent his spare time on the battlefield, with various rebel groups fighting hegemonic imperialism in places like Agoniland. HSBC, Exxon, Chevron, Elon went toe-to-toe -to -toe with all of their private military contractors and won. Finally, defeating Mecco Thomas Sutherland on top of Oil Rig 1, it appeared for a while that Elon had died in a fiery explosion. In fact, he had escaped and used his MIA status to marry longtime partner and intellectual equal Rick Grimes from that zombie show. Knowing it would only be a matter of time before it was discovered he was still alive, Elon worked quickly in the shadows as an undercover operative for Amnesty Extra National. Think James Bond, but horny. He rescued Shelley Miscavige, solved Diana's murder, and secretly fought the reticulants. But he had to reappear when probably paedophile Philippine abducted loads of kids in his cave in a land far away. Musk personally rescued the children with the help of his trusty friend Submarine Robot 12. A retired Navy SEAL from wherever all this happened died in the process and is not worth mentioning the name of. Making money faster than he could give it away, Elon invented trains and tunnels in the modern sense. With the mighty economic power of Tesla, already more valuable than all the other car makers combined, thanks to proprietary self-driving technology and the fact that their cars never catch fire, Elon leveraged China into a fully-fledged democracy. He freed the full-on gong and Muslim slaves of central China, gave all his workers 28 paid days off a year, and liberated the breakaway terrorist republic of Taiwan. Think Einstein, if he had any clue about geopolitics and actually did things beyond theoretical nonsense. But there was a more dangerous enemy. Twitter, the biggest social media company and platform, was controlled by Mohammed bin Salman, the dictator of Saudi Arabia. MBS was using Twitter to oppress people, especially women, so Elon challenged the crazy foreigner to mortal combat to the death. After MBS's head was liberated from his neck, Elon paid a premium to buy Twitter, even though he was not legally obliged to do so, and under international law was able to claim Twitter employees as thralls for life, or until he himself was defeated in combat. Twitter at the time, as you know, was rubbish. But when Elon took over a wave of kindness and positivity was unleashed. In his first week he turned the failing platform around, and in the spirit of free speech, he offered a billion dollars to whoever told the funniest joke about himself. Unfortunately, no one could think of anything remotely funny to say about him, so he gave the billion dollars away to some peasants in a shithole country. As Twitter became more and more ubiquitous and essential to daily life, gobbling up other social media platforms like Dig and Facebook, America came to face a new dilemma. Elon was surely a great candidate for the presidency, but he wasn't born in America and so could not stand. What happened next was extraordinary. The nation came together as one, Republicans, Democrats, neo-Nazis and the Red Army faction to change the constitution. Elon and his running mate, intellectual powerhouse and renowned journalist Joe Rogan were elected unopposed. Why shouldn't term limits be eliminated if a candidate is clearly so superior to all others? Now America enters a new dawn, a dawn of sustainable workforces, of cafeteria tokens, and of mandated compassion everywhere. As Elon stood in front of tens of millions of normal Americans who had come out of their damp hovels just to see him at his inauguration, his father Errol approached him and whispered into his ear, I love you, son. I always have. The end.